mid 40s. I had no concern of the outcome of how my family would because I was thinking oh, they're going to be happy because I'm, I'm making a lot of money. I'm presenting, you know, a lifestyle for them. And you know, if they need something, dad's got it. You know, I, that was my rationale for doing it, but that's not good because I wasn't there for the dad moments. I should have been. And if you're a young person without children and you plan on having children or necessarily you don't have to be a young person, but if you haven't had children yet and you're about to do so, and you're embarking on this journey, do follow what I put out in that 1440 series. It, it's you will hear from my heart. And uh, the series I did, if I could go back and tell my younger self, you know what I know now, um, I literally expose my heart to all of you. And uh, I can be honest and tell you, I, I was afraid to put it on YouTube because it's, it's raw. And I speak right from my heart and I'm telling you things that pro most men probably wouldn't admit to because we want to walk around like we have a 20 inch cock and any woman can get with us because we want them. And, and that's just the way it is. And we're Mr. Everything, a Chad. And in reality, you know, when you have children, your life isn't yours. And I did not do the right things. I did not do the right things. I, I spent too much time pursuing this and not being the dad. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but I have time, hopefully, that I can now pursue things and, and make memories with them. So you can have a whole lot of money. You could be, you know, a person of influence in the in this industry and be a fucking failure as a family person. And I was a failure. I, I was not doing the things I should have been doing. I spent way too much time doing all this stuff. But it's 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 my passion. And I it's uh, not the words I'm I'm they're just not reaching far enough for me to to feel satisfied and explaining. All I know is you can think that you're successful because you make a lot of money and you can have a lot of nice things and afford things and not worry about the cost of living and still not be happy, not satisfied and regretful. If you do the things that I did wrong, you'll have that same discomfort that I feel. Like I know some of you sit around thinking, man, I see he must be really happy right now. He's kicking back. I have a lot of regret. I wish I would have done things that were simple, that they didn't cost anything. Just my time and attention towards my kids and my wife. If I would have done those things more, I wouldn't feel the guilt that I feel. I have lots of money. But that doesn't compensate for it. Them knowing that we have that money doesn't compensate for it. You know, hear my kids tell me just this weekend. So this is awesome, Dad, to be able to you know, spend time with you like this because we never had it before. And I broke down right in the restaurant. I'm appreciative that they recognize it. But it's just like, and I don't want to tell them don't say that because they're, it, it, they should tell me. They're, in, they're It's entitled to them. They need to tell me that stuff and I need to hear it. But you don't want to be like I am right now hearing it where you could just plan your life better. Success can be had and you don't need to be a, a, a monster in it like I was trying to be. Like it, it devoured my entire life. And for the folks that are constantly always you know, reaching out to me and trying to tell me, please don't you know, stop doing what you're doing in November. You need to really understand why I need to stop. Like if you respect me, you'll respect the fact of why I'm doing it. Because the money, I can make lots of money. I can make mentorships. I can make books. I can make courses. I can blow that fucking YouTube channel up and advertise every fucking where and be a, the biggest name in this industry. I don't want it. I don't want it. It didn't do anything for me as a family man. At the end of the day, I have to look my children in the face. I have to look at my wife. And yes, they might smile and say, I love you, dad. But behind that, they have so many open voids of time where I was not there and I was in the house with them. Do you want to hear that from your children? 
do you want to look at your wife when she says, I love you, and you know she's reaching to just to say, you are the man I love, you're the person I married, you're the father of our children, and I'm appreciating the time with you right now, but I have to appreciate it so much more because I don't know if you're going to go right back into doing what you've been doing for all these years in your entire adult life. You don't want to feel that. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want to feel that. Fast cars, big bank accounts, doesn't compensate for it. And a lot of people you know, that write books, they won't ever tell you that shit because they didn't get rich. They're making money off of book sales. They're selling books because they have to sell that book. I'm walking away from it at the biggest point of my career as a mentor, as a teacher or whatever. All the hype and stuff that's around me right now, I'm uncomfortable by it. Like I'm, I'm genuinely uncomfortable. I have a lot of people asking me to talk publicly. I'm not going to drop names, but uh, I'm just, I'm shy. Like I, I don't want to be like that. I can talk like this and pour my heart out to you because you're not sitting next to me. If you were being training one by one, you know, one-on-one, I wouldn't talk about the things I've talked about. I would talk about the markets and how they would beat the fuck out of you. But I'm not going to tell you where I messed up as a husband, as a, as a dad, as, as the real human being. I failed there miserably. I would want to know that from a mentor. I would want to know where they made major mistakes. And every book and author and every educator out there, they've never really scratched that surface. They talk about things outwardly. This person over here as a case study. But strangely, they don't ever have any problems in their own fucking life. Like they don't have any errors that they made. And I have. And I wish I wouldn't have done it. And since I went through pain, the Bible says, you know, we go through these trials and tribulations and things that hurt us. So that way we can give a testimony. I didn't lose sight and hope of, you know, who was in control of me when I didn't have control of myself. And ultimately, he, he steered me where I am today. Even though I thought I was dialed in, I was lost. I had no idea where I was going. I had no idea I was going to end up where I'm at right now. I didn't set out to be inner circle trader. You know, Mr. Smart Money Concepts and all this bullshit that people build up around my name. Like, I literally did a, a, a search on YouTube. Do it. Just do inner circle trader or ICT on YouTube. And it's weird to see all these people with my logo and like putting all that stuff. Like, it's, it's not like what I thought it was going to be like. When I was 20 years old, if I could be really good at this and I could be popular, I wanted to be Larry Williams 2.0, but better. And I'm going to be all over the place. I'm going to teach and do circuit teachings and go to Australia and go to the UK and all that shit. And I'm not, I'm not into that. Like, I don't want to do it. Like just a little bit of notoriety, which, you know, it's, I'm, I'm still small. I, I just can't imagine being some behemoth with all this attention on me, I wouldn't do well with it. It makes me uncomfortable. It makes me feel, makes me feel anxious. Not that I'm afraid of anything. I just, I'm uncomfortable. Like I'm uncomfortable when, when people walk up, we had a guy, we were out uh, in the 2021 vet and we were up on Bel Air road. We were going down towards the, the beltway and this guy gets out of his car and he starts taking pictures of us. I'm like, what the fuck again, man? And he's like, beautiful car, beautiful car. Can I get another picture from the other side? I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do to stop you? But it's just like, it's weird. Now I'm certain that that person has no idea that I'm an inner circle trader, but I was weirded out by the whole experience. Like I, I you know, some of you young guys be like, yeah, I would love that. That'd be fucking amazing. I don't like that. Like it, I love the car for me. I don't give a fuck if anybody else likes it or doesn't like it. I like it. I bought it because I want it. And I don't use my image as ICT publicly. Like, I don't do that. Like, I don't have inner circle trader tags, like, on my car. Like, you'd probably expect ICT1, ICT2, you know, for, for every car I have. I don't, I don't have that. I don't want to draw any kind of attention to myself for that shit. And I'm really looking forward to post-November 
just being back to just boring me. Like I, I, I miss that about me. Like I want to have just my own personal space, my own time, and and back to just being content like that. And I said the other day on Twitter, I said when I wake up in the morning, all of you, my personal students, and all of you are my first thought. Now I have five kids and I'm married. Is that normal? No. There's something wrong there. It's imbalanced. I have to balance that. And as long as I keep making myself available like this, it will remain unbalanced. This will always take more of my time. Well, I mean, we're going on three hours. And it's not monetized. I live this. And I want you to succeed. But I also have a family. And they want me in their life. They want me making memories with them. And I have to make myself available for that. And that's that's the reason why in November I'm stopping. I want my holiday season to be joyful, away from markets, away from Twitter, away from YouTube, you know, all that stuff. And it's not because I don't love doing this. I absolutely love it. I love it. But I have to take myself away from it. Because I can't control myself to not keep doing it. It's, just, it's, it's who I am. And I need to change that. I don't want to stay in our circle trader. I don't want to be ICT you know, the rest of my life. I mean, obviously I am, but I don't want to be living my life as inner circle trader. I just want to be, you know, me. And I hope you can appreciate that. And it may not seem fun, like, oh man, this sucks. But all my videos are staying up. Now, I mean, once in a while, a couple times a month, I'm not promising it to talk about a market, you know, share an opinion about something but i'm not promising that and i want you to understand it that that's where i want to go and if i do do that that still in itself will reduce i don't need youtube i don't need ad revenue i don't need mentorship and i don't need book sales but i do want to make my final point about all this and be done with it and whatever you guys do collectively as a community, as, as the industry, whatever you do with the information that helps you improve, you know, God bless you in it. Like, that's the whole reason why I did it. That's why I did it. And if it was anything other than that, I'd still be pushing and trying to build up all the things right now to, to make it bigger. I don't want it to be bigger. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. So you might be surprised if you find success and you find notoriety, you know, it might be the same for you or other people that thrive in that. You, you want to be a celebrity and you become one and you excel in that. I, I just don't feel comfortable with it. Like I, I just, I'm just a regular person you know, with a blessing. And I asked in a prayer that if he would let me understand it, put it in front of me where I can understand it. I would spend the rest of my life teaching it. And once I've said everything I will say publicly, there's nothing less, there's nothing left for me to teach. Like I've emptied myself out. And anything that's kept is not for you. And I don't feel obligated. I don't, that wasn't part of the arrangement because I taught how to trade. I taught how to read the markets the way I see it. And I understand how it's delivered. And I'll be content. And that's my goal. I, that I have an itinerary, like I said, uh, uh, what I want to talk about, when I want to talk about it, how I want to talk about it. And when we're done, we're done. And being upset about it, it's just a waste of energy and, and, and time. Pour yourself into the content. Study it. Make it yours. And then don't forget me. Shoot me an email at innercircletrader at gmail.com and I will love to see your testimony. I would love to see what you're doing. I get so many of them every single week. There's so many people all around the world that reach out to me and, and say, this is what I've been able to do. This is what I'm doing with it. You know, paying for communities in impoverished nations to, to be fed, you know, putting wells in places where they don't have drinking water. You know, that's the stuff I'm talking about. Not, I bought this Lamborghini. 
I bought this McLaren. You know, I bought this house here. I live in a, a new place of the world because of you. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. God bless you for that. But I'm, I want to know what you do with it to help other people. That's what I want. I want to see you doing that. Contributing to people that don't have it. Not repackage my stuff and make mentorships. Okay, that, that's the other thing. I don't, I don't want that. A guy emailed me and said, hey, can I have your permission to uh, take your mentorship and turn it into a book? I'll, I promise I'm going to do word for words. That way I have it right. That's plagiarism. <laughs> okay. Several people already did that on Amazon and I already reached out to Amazon. So, you know, anyway. Make sure I covered everything I want to talk about. Yeah, so you want, you want to strip everything down that I've taught and make a simple model out of it. You need something to justify why you're bullish or bears. You derive that from the weekly chart. And then you look on the daily chart for liquidity or inefficiencies. Where is it going to reach for within that weekly chart expansion, either higher or lower? If you can find something that can agree on what your expectations are on the weekly chart, what does that mean? If you're bullish, it means you think that the weekly chart, the candlestick that's forming for this week to come or the present week that hasn't completed yet, it's going to reach up to some kind of inefficiency, like a fair value gap above the marketplace on the weekly chart now, or it's going to go above a weekly high where buy stops would be. Which one is more likely to occur to go up for either one of those scenarios or to go down for either one of those scenarios, but in the reverse, in other words, looking for an old low if you're bearish or an, a fair value gap below market price. On the, on the candlestick that's on the weekly chart. It sounds like an oversimplification because you're you're ignorant to what it is you're looking for because you're, you're too new. But for people that have been studying price action, it's easy to discern which is more likely. Is it likely to go up for either one of those two reasons or go down for either one of those two reasons? And whichever one is more likely to go with, that's your bias going in from a macro perspective. That is not your daily bias. Your daily bias has to be derived from your daily chart. So, for instance, if we had a really big move lower right on Monday and we're expecting it to expand up the upside, then we're expecting what on Tuesday or Wednesday? We want to see kind of something to, to reverse and go higher, but not change our bias because of it. Everybody looking at one, one candlestick on a daily chart would follow that logic that, OK, that big move on the one candlestick on a Monday, that's going to be the beginning of the, the move for the rest of the week. And that's generally not what happens especially when the instances that we're expecting a, a specific thing in the weekly chart to either occur expanding higher or lower. So the weekly chart gives us our macro perspective, the higher time frame perspective. Then we use our daily chart to zero in with the economic calendar, a medium or high impact news driver. And that time of day, that's when the manipulation starts. And after that initial manipulation, we wait for a imbalance to form. There's going to be some displacement. The fair value gap will form. What time will it form? 10 to 11 or 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. If it's in London, there you go. You're three times. There's three times in a day. Every single day, one of them forms it in every market. Every market, one of those time frames or kill zones, if you want to call it, it will form. That fucking drone has been sitting here in front of me. I'm going to take a picture of it. I got to do it. Hopefully the audience can still hear me. I closed the Twitter app, so if it, if it closes on me, I apologize. I you can probably hear me now if it happened. This is some bitch. There. All right, I got a few pictures of it. So, this from the time I noticed it, it's been it's been sitting here the whole time, ain't moving around, ain't doing anything, just hanging out. So, anyway, it kind of distracted me from what I was saying. But uh, the weekly chart we use for our bias or macro perspective, are we bullish or bearish? And we use our daily chart in conjunction with the economic calendar. So if there's an economic calendar that has, um, for instance, a Tuesday or Wednesday, it has a medium or high impact news driver, then 
we know that there's going to be manipulation on that specific day and around that time. We go in with the narrative in mind that they're going to use that initial manipulation to trick people with the wrong direction. So it's like a Judas swing. Okay. If you want to strip it down to the bare chrome, one easy model that I'm just giving to you just like this. This is not the only way to do it. Bro needs a muffler. The lower time frames, four hour, one hour. Okay. You're just basically looking at market structure then. You're looking for uh, specific key levels to measure to see swing projections to get low hanging fruit objectives. And when you time the market, when we're using like the silver bullet as a, as a, a model of choice, it could be as easy as the optimal trade entry. It could be as easy as using the um, 2022 model. Any one of those can form in these silver bullet time windows, this 60 minute intervals where your, your focus is literally reduced down to one single hour. 